Giant flying monsters from Transylvania is a bit of a silly concept. Makes for great horror stories, but to think that something like that could ever actually exist is to think in complete fantasy. Oh shit, never mind. So there is a paleo island that has gotten quite a bit of attention in the last few years, mostly because it is a textbook example of what is known as the island rule. Now we'll get into what that is soon enough, but first let's take a look at this particular island. During the late Cretaceous, between 166 million years ago, much of modern day Europe was actually a series of islands, or an archipelago, thanks to the excessive rise in sea levels that I spoke about in my video here. One of these islands was where present day Romania is. In the region of Transylvania was Hatseg Island. Also, yes, that is how it's pronounced. I did also used to call it Hayteg Island. This island was roughly the size of modern day Hispaniola, being around 31,000 square miles, which while a lap at a casual stroll might seem silly, it's still not all that big. It was also quite different to its neighbouring islands in that it was surrounded by a deep ocean basin rather than shallow sea, contributing more to the contrary life that existed in this area. Now the fact that an island existed in such low relief is a mixture of oceanic crust sinking underweight and the fact that this island was likely built up by a volcano, since volcanic deposits are found here, though it did become inactive when life here became more abundant. Now the comparison with Caribbean islands doesn't stop there either. At the time, Hatseg Island was much closer to the equator, making the annual mean temperatures here around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius or 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Standing on this island, you would have been met with tropical surroundings, with palms and cycads being prominent as well as tropical flowers. Broad leaf tree forests were also extensive on the inner portions of the island with a high number of braided rivers and lakes running throughout to help keep these tropical plants stay hydrated. And that help was certainly needed. Even the plants were weird here, since Hatseg Island was seasonally dry, with rain only hitting the areas at certain times of the year, which is really not ideal for tropical plants. Now it's thought that they were helped by the rivers and lakes, as well as banking water from the soil during the odd monsoon season. Now I keep talking about how weird life was here and you've been patient long enough, so let's take a look at Hatseg Island's fauna. You had some small multi-tubercolate mammals as well as freshwater amphibians and fish, but like most of the world at the time, Hatseg Island was dominated by reptiles. Some of these consisted of small turtles, crocodilians, lizards and snakes, but the majority of fauna was of course dinosaurs and pterosaurs. Now all these animals were actually endemic to the island and the weirdness cannot be seen more than with the dinosaurs and the pterosaurs. Here you had iguanodontian such as Rabadon, Zomoxes and Transylanosaurus, Hadrosaurs like Telmatosaurus, quote unquote Titanosaurs like Magyarosaurus and Paludotitan, I'll tell you why Titanosaurs was in quotation marks in just a sec, Ankylosaurs such as Struthiosaurus, and quite a few theropods, with some indeterminate specimens, an indeterminate dromaeosaur, a varasaurid such as Predicnine, and a few flightless birds such as Gargantuavis and Balior. Now you may have noticed something here. There were quite a few herbivores here, but none of them were big. Even the titanosaurs are only that in name, since even by general sauropod standards, they were tiny. Then you have the fact that no large or even medium sized theropods exist here. And the only exception to this is Gargantuavus. I did explain this more in the aforementioned Cretaceous video, but whilst birds were pretty successful during the Cretaceous, they were successful as small flyers. Large flightless birds were practically unheard of before the Cenozoic. So for an animal of this kind and size to be here instead of more of the other theropods is really weird. So the herbivores were living a nice, peaceful life with no big theropods hunting them down, right? Not exactly. I haven't even started on the pterosaurs. Now I'm sure being insular, Hatseg Island had quite a few flying visitors, but the pterosaurs endemic to this place belong mostly to a particular group known as Ajdarkids. You had examples such as Eurajdarko and Albadraco, 
both of which were very big pterosaurs, but neither were quite as big as Hatsig Island's apex predator, Hatsigopteryx. Now, I've spoken about giant ashdarkids before here, but just to quickly touch on Hatsigopteryx itself, this pterosaur is contender for the largest flying animal of all time, competing only with Quetzalcoatlus. It had a wingspan of around 12 meters or 39 feet, and whilst it was on the ground, it would have been the same height as a giraffe. And believe it or not, being on the ground was when this flying animal was at its most dangerous as well. Now for an animal this big that can fly, there isn't actually any practical way that it can hunt using this ability. Pterosaurs didn't actually have the feet to pick anything up. And at this size, the added weight would make a difference between flying and not flying. Skim feeding would also have been too risky since sharp changes in pitch would be something this pterosaur would have been incapable of. And pursuing land animals by flying requires aerial agility that, again, does not come with flight at this size. But as ungainly as these giant edged arcades look, they were pretty competent at picking up speed when they needed to when walking on all fours. This giant would have stalked pretty menacingly around the forests and plains of Hatseg Island, pecking up any animal smaller than it which was every animal we came across. So an island during the late Cretaceous in which dinosaurs are running for their lives and pterosaurs are the dominant predators. What the hell's going on? Well, let's head back to that island rule that I mentioned earlier. When a landmass is small enough and completely cut off from anything other than water, the terrestrial animals are cut off with it. Nothing really comes in and nothing really comes out. This does often include flying animals since they'll sometimes lose that ability over time or they simply don't need to go anywhere else. The first thing that happens here is the heterogenization of ecological pressures. Conditions and environments here end up being like no other and with no other animals coming in and diluting the gene pool and no animals leaving for more suitable opportunities, the life there will be presented with unique scenarios that they have to adapt to. After enough time and generations, these animals end up looking quite different from their relatives in other parts of the world, which is why the life in Australia is uh, special. Now another big factor here is resource availability. If resources are notably lower than in other parts of the world, animals that were once giant will find themselves either starving to death or adapting in a way in which they get bodies that don't require as many calories. In other words, they get remarkably smaller, and this is known as insular dwarfism. On the other hand, the resources on an island might be too low for one group, but heavily favour another. If, for example, the dinosaurs evolved to be smaller and the Ashdarkids capitalised on the fact that no large predators were present, their food source is highly abundant and, with no competition, were allowed to grow very large, unchecked. But what happened first? Gigantism or dwarfism? Well, it's not often as simple as that. There is the likelihood that they happen simultaneously, but if they didn't, I personally would put money on the gigantism happening first. Firstly, pterosaurs are a lot more flexible with their occupation, so might not be as prone to the island rule, and there's the fact that largest darkids existed elsewhere in the world. So maybe some largest darkids rocked up one day, saw there were quids in with no competition on this island, and then progressively got bigger from there. But who knows? Now as always, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Consider leaving a like on this video and also don't forget to check out the Principles of Paleontology playlist where you find this video and a hell of a lot more. Catch you guys next time.